The most famous dwarf planet, Pluto, is a little icy body revolving around our sun, beyond the orbit of even our farthest planet, Neptune. A space probe, called New Horizons, was launched in 2006 to study Pluto and beyond. It took an entire nine years to reach Pluto, giving us new information about the small world and the beautiful images of its surface seen here. One of Pluto's features includes a lighter section on its surface in the cute shape of a heart. Some like to joke that Pluto's heart signals its love for its moon Charon. Charon and Pluto are involved in a rare cosmic dance. Since Charon is about one-eighth the mass of Pluto, which is a lot for a moon, the force of gravity in between Charon and Pluto is enough for Pluto to make small revolutions as well. They both technically orbit around a point that is in between the two bodies. Not only do they orbit each other, they are also tidally locked. This means that they both make one rotation in the same time that they complete one orbit. I'll show you why this is so cool. If we go down to the surface of Pluto and watch the time pass, the sun and the stars rise and set like they do here on Earth. But Charon doesn't. It looks like it sits still and hangs in the air, a constant in Pluto's sky with an ever-changing background. Pluto was the subject of a lot of controversy a few years ago, but Pluto wasn't the first object to go through all of this confusion. All the way back in 1801, an object named Ceres was spotted. It was thought to be an additional planet that orbited in the space between Mars and Jupiter. Slowly, they began to find more and more objects in Ceres' orbital neighborhood. By 1860, they had discovered more than 60 objects in this area of our solar system. Instead of calling all the objects planets, they decided to reclassify them as asteroids, resulting in the asteroid belt in between Mars and Jupiter as we know it today. Then, in 1930, Pluto was discovered in the far reaches of our solar system and considered the ninth planet. But later, more objects were found, just as it happened with Ceres. An entirely new classification was developed, and in 2006, five objects became the first to be considered dwarf planets. What exactly is a dwarf planet? To be a dwarf planet, you have to meet some criteria. First, you have to orbit directly around the sun, so that disqualifies all the moons. Next, you have to have enough mass so that your gravity can pull you into a shape that is close to a sphere. This disqualifies our asteroids. They look more like misshapen potatoes than spheres. Lastly, to be a dwarf planet, it means you don't have enough mass to clear your own orbit. This disqualifies our eight planets. Take a look at the orbits of the planets. Notice that there aren't many asteroids crossing their paths. Now notice the dwarf planets. Their orbits lie within the asteroid belt, or the Kuiper belt. They don't have enough mass to clear their own paths, fulfilling the final criteria required to be a dwarf planet. Let's take a closer look at the other four official dwarf planets. In 2015, Ceres was visited by a space probe called Dawn. It studied the dwarf planet and gave us the incredible images of its surface that are shown here. Ceres is thought to have been formed during the very early stages of our solar system. One of Ceres' craters is the Okator Crater. The bright spots are salty deposits of sodium carbonate, suggesting that there may have been water long ago, or thermal activity beneath its surface. Ceres is the largest object in the asteroid belt, by a lot. Ceres alone is one-third the total mass of the entire asteroid belt. This shows how small most asteroids are, because Ceres is still smaller than Earth's moon. In fact, all of the dwarf planets are smaller than Earth's moon. Haumea, Makemake, and Ares all lie within the Kuiper belt, way out beyond Neptune. Haumea looks a bit different than the others. It is shaped a little bit more like an egg or a skittle. Haumea rotates extremely fast. Its days are only four Earth hours long. Imagine if Earth rotated that fast, giving us about two hours of day and two hours of night. No space probes have ever visited Haumea, Makemake, or Ares, so we don't have images of their surfaces. If you view the solar system from its side, the planets orbit on a similar plane, like peas on a dinner plate. However, Pluto, Haumea, Makemake, and Ares are more like peas that you flung off your dinner plate entirely. Their orbits are not only more inclined, 
but they are more elongated than the planets, making their distance from the sun change drastically at different points in their orbits. Aries, for example, gets so far from the sun that its methane-nitrogen atmosphere freezes and falls to the ground like snow. But at a different point in its orbit, it is close enough to the sun that the atmosphere warms up and thaws. Other than these official dwarf planets, there are candidates for other possible dwarf planets in our solar system that are currently being studied and discussed. In time, there will likely be more than the original five. Some candidates have fun names like Sedna, Quawa, and one nicknamed the Goblin. Even with our impressive technology, we still don't know all the objects that lie within the Kuiper Belt. If you had the chance, what would you name the next dwarf planet that is yet to be discovered?